All right, welcome to another edition of In Conversation, and today we're bringing back Mr. Phil Lewis once again. Welcome. Lovely, Joe. Thanks for having me. Nice to be here. Yeah, it seems like we just talked like not that long ago, and here we are already uh, with another album out again already to talk about. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> you know, nonstop in this factory. Uh, it's what we do. It's we like to do it, and uh, we're proud of it. And and it's been it's been really neat um, watching the band's development post reunion with these four records uh, that that we've come so far. Um, and I really do believe, and I have, I, I always say this, but you know the new record is all this is the one that's going to change everything. But it is a bloody good record, no matter how you slice it. I'm proud of it. Um, you know, is it going to sell millions of copies? No, but uh, that's not why we do it. Uh, it sounds good. And, and, and a lot of bands are hesitant to do, to record new material because it, it, it's, it's, it's not easy. And, um, and in, in many cases, it can be something, it could be kind of futile because if you're an old band, um, and and you're recording new stuff when people essentially want to see you for the old stuff um it, it it can it can have its own set of challenges we have we have those kind of challenges um but but we work our way through them um it's great playing new songs live you know it's it's just, it really you know to play these new songs with an audience um for an audience and 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 hopefully uh, an audience that uh, that digs it uh, it's it's a great feeling it's a great feeling it, it, the money can't buy that where does this creative energy come from because you guys have been churning these albums out like at a faster pace than you ever have for probably yeah. throughout your career very much so but we have such a great team that's the thing um you know tracy is he's very prolific as i said he uh the, the way this record came together was basically him coming up with the majority of the music. Uh, he was in Denmark at the time. Uh, he's, he's got a little boy over there. Um, and, and the only time or the best time for him to work, to record, to write um, onto his laptop um, was between 9 a.m. and noon. And he did that. He did that religiously for, for weeks. Um, and he had that album put together in, in, in really no time at all. Um, and also, um, at the same time, Adam Hamilton, who plays drums, was also writing and contributing and, 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 and putting ideas in the pot. Um, and so was Johnny, Johnny Martin, our bass player, and uh, even Ace. Uh, gets a song on the record and for me personally I, Ace's song is my favorite um, but yeah I mean it all all good stuff and and it's a democracy it's not um, you know it's got to be me and Tracy's song or or, or or it doesn't make the album no not that and all that bullshit about well I know it's your song but we have to get writing credits because we're putting none of that no funny stuff no Sharon Osbourne art and shit like that a good song is a good song we welcome it and 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 give full credit um where where it's due um uh, I I'm very fortunate I I work very closely um with a guy called Mitch Davis who I'm sure we talked about in our last interview uh, who records my vocals? The, the the band lay the tracks down, and when it's all sounding good and fat, uh, I get to go in the studio with Mitch for a week, and 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 we turn this this incredible music in, into fantastic songs. So uh, it, it it's a great process. It's it it is work. I mean, it, there's no you can't call it anything else. It's hard work, and and uh, at times. Um, it, you know, it can be anxious, you know, it, it, it's, uh, there's a lot of pressure for me uh, when, when they've recorded, written and recorded such a incredible backing track. I want my part. I want my vocals. I want, I want it to be as good as that. 
and um, with these guys, you know, their they're, they're standard is so high, it really puts a flame up your ass, you know, and uh, a couple of times there, you know, uh, I, uh, I, I, I don't, I'm okay, I, I get help, I get help, like lyric help from um, whoever's got any great lyric ideas, there's no um, exclusivity on that either. So, but most of all, with all, all the all the stress and whatnot, it is really, really good fun. It's great fun doing it. It, it, it goes really quickly. This one was particularly fun because it was post pandemic. So we got to hang out with each other while we were writing it, while we were recording it. We, we were recording on days off on our tour bus on that last summer tour when we were out with Tom Kiefer on that uh, Sonic Slam tour. And uh, so refreshing, especially after the record before, which was recorded entirely remotely. And the only time we saw each other was this, mate. This was a Zoom call. This is that that was it. And 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 you know, it, it turned out okay. Records not bad. It's got some great songs, it's got cannonball on it, which is fantastic. Um but this one. This one's electric. This one's alive. This one's got a pulse. This one is really, um, it was It was like, you know, we were all cooking. We were all like contributing and and uh, that was a lot of fun. So it was like a mixed bag. Everybody had a hand in like the lyrics as well and the song That's, titling. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, everyone's got ideas. Everyone's, you know, like... Um, uh, uh, we're open for suggestions and ideas. Anyone's got any? Yeah, you bet. We, we'll try anything. We give, you know, we've got a five minute rule. Uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll try it. Let's see if, if it sounds, if uh, still sounds good after five minutes. All right, it stays. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that, that's, that's how we work. And it's incredibly democratic. Um, but I wouldn't dream of telling, you know, like, Tracy or, or or those guys, you know what to play, and 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 they don't they don't get on my ass about you know how and what to sing. Fortunately, they uh, they seem to be as happy with my contribution as I am um, to theirs. So it's it's a happy band at the moment. So tell us about a couple of the songs on the album here. I, I would say it's probably the standout track that probably is one of these songs that you're probably going to end up playing the rest of your career, Diamonds. Tell us about yeah. that one. Mm. <laughs> um, for those more sensitive and observant, if you listen to the record and its completion, it, it doesn't have a concept, but there is a recurring theme and that recurring theme is break up, break up, breaking up. Um, it's in You Betray, it's in um, Shattered Glass um, and, 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 and most poignantly it's in Diamond and um, it was, it, it was just such a, Tracy was going through a pretty rough time when we were out on the road last year, out with Tom, putting this record together. Uh, sometimes it was a sad sight to see him so beaten down. Uh, as I said, he's got a little boy over in Denmark. He, he, he had a wife, they've since divorced. And uh, it, was, it was a very, very painful breakup. And, and for him to be on the road, um, now, I was convinced that that was the best place he could be. We were all willing to be supportive of him uh, because we love him like a brother. Um, and so there were times, um, as I said, there's this reoccurring theme of breaking up. And the the moment the 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 Hail Mary mo moment the epiphany was when you know it, it just just seemed he was like so beaten up uh and 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 ready to quit and then we go on stage and he was a box of fireworks 
oh, you know, just, just, oh, and, and it just, just the, the, yeah, you know, you, 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 as, as the lyric says, you know, a broken glass can't carry the weight. It, 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 it's no good right now uh, under this kind of pressure. That it, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't function as a vet, no longer functions as a vessel. However, it shines like a fucking diamond when it gets, and, and, um, that um is is if you'd really like to know that's the secret that's that's what that one's all about um it uh has been criticized as being uh i've read a couple of it, it, you know there's not much to it uh it it, it uh and and it no it, it's not it's a very very basic simple message it 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 it, it you know you don't need to be cluso to figure out the plot here um, I've, I think I've explained it pretty well. I mean, but listen to it from now on. You, you'll, you'll hear that. Um, but yeah, make no apologize for for its 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 simplicity um, and and its direct um, sentiment. I think is 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 uh, uh, and it's a beautiful song. And um, just during. It, we were we had highs and lows last summer. We were out on the tour bus for nine, nine, ten weeks, like almost three months um, during this time. So we had some good times and we had some others that weren't so good. Challenging. I like I think that's the diplomatic way of describing it. Um, but there were these moments. And when when that song, when when we first put that song we first ran it up the flagpole. It gave us a great deal of comfort because, you know, we were working our asses off and I said, good times, bad times, but we had something to show for it, something tangible for the way we were feeling and what we were going through. And um, I hope we play that song live for the rest of our careers because it's beautiful and it's especially mapped out for audience participation i've got this bit even even I, I we played it live three times now and even for people that have never heard it before i just take a, a just a quick minute to explain what i want them to do and where and it's super easy uh and and i point out in it, during the song where to come in and when they come in it, it's just incredible right it, the, 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 the just the place just it, it erupts mm -hmm. in emotion. It's absolutely fantastic, and and yeah, I I can't wait to get out this summer and 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 play that one and 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 uh, see see the the devastation, the devastating effect uh, in a good way um, that 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 beauty has, and and uh, incredibly proud of it. Yeah. All right, I'll ask you about one more on here that I feel is really one of the standouts that's going to lose. Tell us about that one. Oh, man. Man, that song. I'm so proud of that song. Um, I'll tell you what happened. We were, uh, Mitch and I were in the studio. It, 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 it is essentially, for, for Led Zeppelin fans out there, it's essentially a, a rework of Ramble On, isn't it? Um, and... Um, you know, I've always said to Tracy that, you know, I'm much more of a Rod Stewart singer than a Robert Plant singer. And he's, oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I love that. I love that. You know, Rod, uh, Jeff, Jeff, Beck, Jeff Beck and Rod were the first ones to do it. And then Jimmy and Robert. Um, so so when, when, uh, when he brings in something that is so, so definitively uh, Led Zeppelin, um, and and Rod Stewart ain't gonna cut it. Um, well, I, I I tell you, man, I was I was intimidated when I heard it, um, and and I you know figured out what we were gonna do, what Mitch's ideas for it, and uh, I I was like, sorry, fellas, you know, I think this is out of my key. This is out of my reach. Um, I I don't really I can't really do that sort of high Robert Plant. So anyway, we're in the studio in New York and, and, and we've had a good day. We've done like three or four songs and he goes, I'm going to put it up. Let's let's have a go at it. Let's see, see 
you know, roughly how we might try and um, finish it, but we'll we'll see see how it sounds. And he put it up. The track came up, and I sounded fucking awful. I was okay on the verse, but when it came to that chorus, I was I was like I was so flat. I was so so incredibly off. Um, the you know. I, I'm glad that it was just me and Mitch in the in the studio because I, if my band had heard that, uh, <laughs> I might be looking for another gig right now. Um, no, I, I had it was it was really difficult and it didn't sound good. So Mitch says, "Don't look, don't panic." Um, you know, because I'm immediately like, "We need to rewrite this. We need to rewrite it with with, with my voice and in, in in mind and in a much lower register." And he says, no, 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 just go home, go back to your hotel, chill out, have a nice dinner, relax, come in the studio tomorrow fresh, and, and, we'll, and we'll do it first thing. And that's exactly what I did. Went to the studio first thing, knocked it out of the park. Uh, not Knocked it out of the park immediately, right away. It took a while. It took a few, few attempts, but I got it. And that's me, by the way. That's me singing. There's no computer. There's no auto-tune. That's that's it, and um, I I honestly <laughs> I don't know if I could do it again, man. I swear, I, I, it was just a, just a magic magic moment. I can't believe it's me. I cannot believe it because um, because it it's so up there, and you know, not just because it's me, but it's, it sounds really fucking good. Uh, and and the fact that it is me just blows my mind. So yeah, but don't 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 expect to hear on live anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so you guys have really made it uh, hard on yourselves here now when it comes to making a set list with so many great songs from your recent albums here, yeah. you know, along with all the regular standards. Uh, how, do you, how do you satisfy everybody? Uh, it's really difficult, um, you know, because you, you got to understand, you know, we, whether we like it or not, you know, the, 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 uh, we're, we're, it's not unkind to say that we are something of a nostalgia act. And we accept that and we're fine with that. You know, we are a band from the 80s. So we do um, have a responsibility to play the old shit. And we like playing the old shit, don't get me wrong. You know, it wouldn't really be an LA Guns gig without Ballad of Jane, without um, Rip and Tear, without Sex Action, Over the Edge, uh, Electric Gypsy. Um, so yes, you're right. We, we it, It's very, very difficult. Um, especially when you've got four great records, post-reunion records to choose from. But, um, you know, we know we're always going to do speed because that just works well live and, 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 and it's compatible with the old stuff. We'll always do Cannonball. We'll always open with Cannonball. Um, and, and we'll probably always um, do Diamonds now as well. We, we actually do You Betray in the set. But I don't know if that's if how long that's going to last because there are other songs from the album that we'd like to bring into the set and and we really don't have that many slots so it would probably have to be the other new one we, we at best we could get two maybe three off this new record depending on on the length of our set um, you know and and it makes it even more difficult when it's just a sixty minute set um, but um, right. We've, we, you know, we, we've been doing it and, 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 and we don't, doesn't clear the joint out when I say, okay, we're going to do a new one. Uh, they, they've been going down good, um, especially Diamonds, you know, and, and uh, we'll just have to see. But yeah, it really is really difficult when you've got these men, these, these many great songs and, and uh, just a, a, a very limited time. I'd love to, honestly, we'd love to play for two hours, two and a half hours, play everything. Um, but uh, that's, you know, the, the, the opportunities to do that don't uh, come around very often. Yeah, it's not easy, that's for sure. Um, have you ever thought about maybe like if when you're playing the full headline set to maybe like every show mix in like a few a handful of different songs and rotate them out or something to keep it more fresh or what we do um, every now and then is we, we get to play um, a venue, two consecutive nights. Um, 
then we have a lot of fun. Then we can really mix it up. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, if you miss Ballad of Jane, oh, well, <laughs> you should have been there last night. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> so uh, one thing I was going to say, it's definitely refreshing to see you guys not only making new music, uh, but, you know, obviously making some of the best material, material of your career here. Um, while other bands of your era simply seem like they just write out their old material. It's just... Uh, it's weird to see that happen when you know you guys still got these creative juices flowing which really is awesome to see yeah. um and, and you know and the one thing i always thought about you guys is your live show the one thing i really enjoy about the live show is when you go see a, a show like you played here in buffalo over the years many times many it seemed times. like yeah so it seems like no matter how big or small the crowd was you always you guys always number one you gave it a hundred percent and um I thought the sound and the grittiness you guys bring, it always gave us the feel of being on the Sunset Strip with you because you had that live feel right in your face in these yeah. clubs and things. Nice. Hey. But uh, so this this was the way many bands on the Strip started, but it seems like many have, uh, a couple of them have decided to tarnish their name and stuff, you know, with the way they're uh, playing these shows now, which it makes it look, makes you guys look so much better uh, out there still doing it. It, it sure does. Um, to, to address your, your first point about um, bands from our era putting out new music, um, I guess just a lot of them just, it, it's, it's just not worth it. it. You know, they're certainly financially, monetarily, there's, there's no dough in it. Um, so you know, it, 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 with with band, you know, it, when you go full nostalgia, you don't have to worry about um, where to put the new songs because there aren't any, you know. And 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 you know, you take a, a band with a fairly decent track record, they can easily fill sixty ninety minutes uh, doing old shit, and and good luck to them if that's if that's um, what they want to do. Um, and and how they make their living and and they're happy to do that. Uh, it, it's far from me to, to to pass any kind of judgment on that. Uh, as far as tarnishing goes, I, you know, I I really, you know, lip syncing in front of a giant fucking television screen. Um was never my agenda I, and 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 i don't I, I don't know if i could do that either to be honest with you I, I i don't know how much i could do that i suppose you know if the money is just so fucking amazing you know just shut up and count the money maybe i don't know but um it it, it is really really vacuous um i can't stand those big fucking stupid screens i mean i just if you want to what it's like watching TV, it's like sitting at home watching and, and, and having the band guys look like little ants, like little fucking tiny things, size of, 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 of a penny uh, uh, in front of this humongous screen with all this fucking psychedelic bullshit going on. And um, it's bollocks. It is utter fucking bollocks. I know we played in front of a screen, and and we, you know, we we will again in, in the future. But when it when when the show becomes the big fuck the, the television, what's on television, and and I won't even get into the audio part, um, because at that point, it's no longer a, a concert; it's a circus. It's 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 a pantomime. It's something different, and 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 um, I'm not going to knock that either, because you know, it turns out that the people, <laughs> the people that go to these things, that attend these things, don't really give a fuck whether it's it's lip synced or they they, they just want to drink. They want to be with their friends. They want to listen to the music of the of the soundtrack of of, of their, their their youth, um, and and um, it's probably better that they don't hear 
how fucking atrocious the band sounds. Um, because it's, you know, it's a big stage. It's massive. The stadium, and, and, and you've got the big fucking stupid screen behind it. To try and, and pull off something uh, 100% live like that, of course, ACDC have no problem doing that. But they're a really fucking good band. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of trending a bit at the moment because because I I'm I'm, I'm just uh, I I I'm quite outspoken about my disappointment in in uh, in bands that uh, I once we once looked up to. Um, and it is disappointment. And uh, but as I say, at the end of the day, I don't think really that the audience really cares. You know, I, I really don't. So I think it might just be a big fucking storm in a teacup. We'll see. We'll see how the attendance goes uh, for the uh, for the European leg. Now the cat's out the bag. Um, and uh, we'll see if people really care fascinating I, I don't think they do well like you said european leg they probably haven't played over there in a long time either yeah. so there's going to oh, be people out there for the yeah. party like you said yeah. i did a shit of course and 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 yeah i i i doubt i mean nobody's going for the music <laughs> <laughs> it's a different story with with something like that you know it's it's a it's a phenomenon and and uh i uh you know Am I jealous? You bet, man. Yeah, give me the give, show me the money. Let's go. I'll do it. But I, I couldn't do that and not this. You know, I, I, I've got I just it's um, this damn integrity gets the better of me. But I I I I, I, I don't mind. Um but I'm I'm certainly not knocking people for going out and having a good time. That's that's I, I don't believe in that for a second. Yeah, it kind of kind of reminds me back when uh, the one year I don't remember it was a while back though. You played M three festival, and you guys were all the, the whole talk of the whole festival. It's like you were the best act on that particular uh, festival, and you guys just knocked it right out of the park. That's when we played the B stage, wasn't it? I'm not sure when, but I remember it was on TV, and everybody. I think Eddie Trunk hosted it and all that. Yeah, yeah, it was fantastic, and it started raining in the middle of the set, and we, we were just so determined to steal that day. It was just absolutely. I was just so focused on doing that. I had to. I just really, really wanted to make a, a, a great, great impression. Um, and you know, we're going in with that kind of determination. Um, I, I I couldn't fail. Thank you. Definitely a great show. Uh, now, when you guys tour, obviously last year you were on Sonic Slam. Obviously, you mentioned a couple times here about the Tom Kiefer tour and everything, and uh, it was definitely a great show. But obviously, you guys are a little limited and restricted, you know, about the time frames on something like that. So yeah. now, now that this album is out, are you planning on doing more headlining shows, or are you gonna? Latch yeah, up. yeah. We don't have anything like anything remotely like uh, the Sonic Slam. Uh, I hopefully we'll do some more shows with Tom, uh, West Coast shows, if if, if we can. Um, but no, for this part, for this year, for this summer, uh, we are pretty much um, focusing on, on on doing it ourselves, and you know, playing a longer set, and and just playing our own rooms, um, and and. Uh, gives us an opportunity to um to play more longer new stuff uh which is you know it's it, it, as you say you know when you're out on a package um we you know like real lucky i mean for the most part it was usually 60 minutes every now and then we might get 70 75 but yeah for the most part it was just you know like it was over before we even knew it um so this is going to be a, a lot better. We got new management, we got new new agent. So we've got basically new infrastructure, and so we're uh, that that always takes a little time to get up to speed, uh, which is doing nicely. And um, as I said, it's a real happy band at the moment. Um, we've had some bumps, we've had some highs, had some lows, 
but we all we, we, we've got a, just a great sense of optimism um for 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 what we're going to do live and 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 just incredibly proud of this new record so one, one question i want to ask you real quick is about uh the song access denied it was a song i guess you were credited as a solo song um, yeah when did, when did you record that and uh tell us about that song well um i i left the band in 2000 no 96 96 i came back in 2000 uh 95 uh, so between like 95 and 2000, um, I really wasn't involved in music professionally. Um, I was I was involved in, in uh, I, I worked for Fox. I worked for a TV station. I, I was an audio engineer for a sports channel. Um, but I, I was still writing and... Um, and still recording and and I had you know my own little studio the garage studio and it was back in the days of of ADATs and and ADAT was the the first generation home recording uh digital um in uh, medium the, the, that was the only way up until that point you only had analog um and 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 analog um uh, has 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 its has its drawbacks. Mostly, it's incredibly expensive. Um, so I, I recorded an album on these ADATs, and and even though they are uh, technically digital, they have pretty low bit rate. It was real entry level stuff, so it doesn't have the, the, the song you're talking about doesn't have the sonic dynamics that I would like it to, to have to have had. Um, because of the gear that I was using at that time, that was like you know that's that was that was the trendy stuff to use, and I'm incredibly proud of it. So I I, 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 com I compiled an album's worth of stuff, songs, um, and um, I called it more purple than black because it there were it, I really wasn't you know big into the heavy metal scene at that point, and most of my songs were kind of a had a kind of a I don't know. I mean, a, a bit of an Oasis vibe, to be honest. That's what I was listening to. I wasn't listening to metal. I was listening to Britpop. Um, and, and uh, I, 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 you know, I, I would think it's pretty obvious that that uh, musically uh, was probably my biggest influence at the time. But I, I, I'm very happy you bring that song up. Um, that's another breakup song, of course, isn't it? <laughs> um, uh, but that, that, was a, that was a completely different breakup. But yeah, you know, I, 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 that's you know, songs that that I would write uh, in the morning, and and come home after work and record them at night, and uh, that was one of them that I, I, I think turned out good. I'm, I'm proud of, and appreciate you put, calling that one out. Have you ever thought about bringing it to the band and updating it and recording it the way you want to? Uh, you know, I wouldn't dream of of bringing anything that I've ever done. Um, solo or without Tracy mm. I want him to play exactly what he feels like playing uh, I, I I don't want to I don't want him to play stuff like um better not love me because it, it's, <laughs> it's just you know, it's beneath him I want him to play the stuff that he wrote that that he feels happiest um playing live that, that 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 stretch him that that uh make it make it fun for him and and i don't think my songs would do that i think my, they're just so so incredibly basic um it, it, i i'd be a bit embarrassed to even suggest that to be honest okay well last question i have for you is what happened to the mustache <laughs> you, <laughs> i was so used to seeing it on the last tour and now it's gone <laughs> No, I know I miss it too. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Well, you know, something that I grew uh, during the pandemic and um, as fate would have it, um, we were going to do make a video and the video was going to have a, a pirate theme. So I was halfway there, you know, I had the pirate look and, and um, 
you know, I, I liked it. I thought it looked good. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm no spring chicken. I, I don't pretend that I'm in my 30s. You know, I, I, I thought, OK, well, you know, a bit of a, a mustache. You know, Tracy's got the full beard. Um, I, I don't I don't see a problem here. And, and you know, the, I, I, I sensed certain grumblings. I liked it. I liked photos of it, especially in the whole cannonball vibe, you know, with the whole pirate vibe. But um, when it came to doing this new record, I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out where, where, so I, just, I shaved it and it was just like, <laughs> how it goes. And, and I, I still feel kind of naked without it. But the uproar, it's like, yeah, it's gone. Finally, he, he got rid of it. And and it was just like, take it easy, people. And you read, you know, enough of those, a few dozen, a hundred of those. And it's like, oh, OK, well, why didn't you say something? And I, the response will probably be, we did. Oh, <laughs> Don't do it again. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, well, that that's that's the story behind that. <laughs> I really enjoyed this interview, Joe. Thanks again. Thank, appreciate your support. And um, thanks thanks for playing the record. Well, thanks for your time. I m much appreciate it. And good luck with everything on the new album. And hopefully I'll uh, be able to get to see this tour if you make it out yeah. of here. Cool, cool. If not, we'll be, I'm sure it'll be up in Buffalo soon. Yep.